morning youtubers on today's episode i have a viewer sort of request a gentleman emailed me asking if i could do like a video showing the penetration differences as you increase amperages and i thought well that would be a great idea to do with 7018 rod because i've kind of ran out of the 6013 we're done with that for a while so why not start it as my second video with 7018 welding so i have a bunch of 7018 rods here i got a piece of quarter inch plate clean the mill scale off of it give me a thumbs up if you hate welding on mill scale and hate cleaning it what i'm going to do is a ton of passes on this line after line after line bead after bead with probably somewhere between 90 95 amps all the way up to 150. these rods claim they run from 90 to 150 amps which on this thick a plate i think we're going to be struggling a little bit at 90 amps but anyways uh i'll go from probably ah, screw it we'll do it 90 to 150 in five amp increments and then i'll cut the whole plate down the middle which is going to be fun and we'll cut and etch it and see what we got my prediction is i think after 130 amps that we're not going to see any more penetration into the plate that's my guess i've been wrong before i'll eat my words if i am so let's get into it Thanks for listening to 99.1 Smooth Jazz. Upcoming, we have four more 7018s to run, and then we can get on with the video. <laughs> Thought I would do a little review before we go and cut this in half. <clears throat> Ran it all the way from 90, which was extremely difficult. 
all the way up to, I don't know where we finished, 165 or so, 160, somewhere in there. I had really bad arc blow right here. The rod ended up just spitting buckshot out. So I stopped, restarted, and then ran it again. And you can see one of them buckshots are right there. To be expected when you're running well over the recommended amperage. You can see how humped up versus it's starting to flatten out. And then this is really flattening out. This looks like 70-24 rods. I would say in this zone is kind of what you want to be looking for. So not bad. Obviously no full penetration through this plate. It's too thick. You'll never penetrate with uh, 70, 18 through quarter inch. But yeah, um, some of the starts were extremely difficult. The rod I was using, which is uh, Hobart's H4R low hydrogen uh, moisture resistant rod, they seem to start harder than most of the other 7018s I have. And I'll tell you what, when I was running cold, it was a bastard to get it to start. By the time I was up in the 140 amp range, it would start itself. So, you know, I didn't have hot start on or anything either. So that made it a little bit more difficult. But yeah, let's uh, cut this in half. I'll tell you what, this was a lot of fun. <laughs> a battery operated sawzall with a dull blade cutting through quarter inch thick plus material this took me a while but you know the end result it was worth it you know my curiosity was satisfied by what i found and hopefully you find use in this too yeah maybe i'll have to make a trip to home depot and get some actual like thicker metal blades i do have a dry cut saw it's just that would be a pain to try and use this and i didn't feel like using my torch which i probably should have oh well the results from the right to the left, the right is one and then it goes two, three, four, and five. Pretty much uh, one, two, and three, the bead is just sitting on the plate. There's no penetration, very small bead. You definitely don't want that. And then beyond that, they're not much better. So five, six, seven, eight, red, right to left. Little bit different results. I would say that seven and eight are starting to get pretty acceptable. Seven is 120 amps, eight is 125 amps. Now these are a lot different um, than the previous ones, I would say. Realistically, nine, 10, 11, 12, which is 130 to 145 amps, I would say are all acceptable and realistically almost identical in profile. You know, 13, 14, 15, and 16 have about equal penetration. They're starting to get a little bit wider, but it's not really biting in any deeper. And honestly, 13, which is 150 amps, all the way up to 165 at 16, aren't that much different from 10, 11, and 12. This photo kind of makes it seem like the difference is more than it really is, but you have to remember that that's a quarter inch plate. On your screen, it probably looks like three eighths or half inch. The difference in person is almost negligible. Well, was it what you expected? This is actually already oxided down here just from the air, so it's almost impossible to see the cut and etch, but it's pretty much what I expected, to be honest. There's a limit to what penetration you can get just by upping the amperage. When you look at these beads, which this starts at about 9 right here, 130 amps. This section right here from about 9 to, I don't know, about 150, 55. Very, very similar overall profile, very similar penetration which is, I guess, what I expected. Now, this guy had 165, and pretty much these three are, are over recommended amperage. They, it ran, but like this, um, 165, I'll tell you what, the arc blow on that was getting pretty bad. So really not controllable. So I guess my takeaway, and maybe yours is different, let me know in the comments, 
My takeaway is that if you're running on quarter inch plate between about 130 to 140, 45 amps with this rod, which they claim up to 150, I think you're doing just good. The penetration profile is very good. The bead width, bead height, all of that good. So obviously you base your amperage off the thickness of the metal, but on quarter inch, you should definitely be up, you know, 135, 140 amps. You know, you got to remember this is a flat plate. If you're doing like a fillet weld or a lap weld or something where you're joining two pieces of metal, it'll take even more heat than this to get penetration. So you don't, you know, the takeaway really should be you don't want to be afraid of amperage. Like when I was first learning the stick weld, I'd use like 120 or 125 amps doing fillet welds. And you can do a fillet weld on quarter at that. But I'll tell you what, it's going to be lacking penetration without a doubt. I mean, once stuff gets preheated, yeah, 120, 25 amps works. So don't take it as that you have to run higher amperage. Like preheated plates take a lot less heat than, than cold plates. But just don't be afraid of amperage. Run the appropriate amperage. So anyways, my next video, I'm going to run fillet welds with 7018. And we're going to do... A cut and etch. No, I won't do this many fillet welds. Good God. I'd be at it for two days straight by the time I was done. But I'll do a couple, three, four different amperages and we'll actually look at it and see what we find. But I think it's going to be pretty telling because the minor differences in this plate is going to be significant when you're talking fillet welds. Anyways, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate it. Till next time.